Dafyomi Tractate Bhavakama, page 114b, part 2, with the words, the uh, Hisiya Rebi al Piv Lakahuna. The Gemara concludes the statement of Rav Dimi and explains the challenge. And Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi married her to a priest based on his statement. Since it is prohibited by Torah law for a priest to marry a woman who has engaged in sexual intercourse with a man, forbidden to her by Torah law, and with whom she cannot establish a marital bond, example a Gentile, it is clear that Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi relied on an offhand remark even with regard to a prohibition by Torah law. The Gemara answers the sages were lenient with regard to a captured woman. By Torah law, a woman taken captive may be presumed to remain permitted to a priest, and it is the sages who decreed that she is forbidden due to the concern that she was raped. It is this rabbinic decree that may be disregarded on the basis of offhand remarks. The Mishnah teaches, but if the bees settled on a branch of a tree, he may not cut off the other's branch in order to take the bees, even on the condition that he will later give him the money for it. It is taught in Ebrita that Rabbi Ishmael, son of Rabbi Yochanan ben Broca, says, it is a stipulation of the court which takes effect even without being confirmed by individuals that one will be permitted to enter another's field and cut off another's branch in order to salvage his own swarm of bees. And the owner of the field then collects the value of his branch from his fellow's swarm. And it is also a stipulation of the court that one who sees another's honey barrel break should pour out his own wine and then use the empty wine barrel to salvage the other's honey, which is more expensive than wine. I don't know about that. Honey? Maybe in those days. Today, wine is more expensive than honey. Maybe because we have it commercially made, but... Okay, and the owner of the wine then collects the value of his wine from the other's honey. And it is also a stipulation of the court that one who sees that another's donkey has fallen should unload his own wood from his own donkey and load the other's flax, which is more expensive than wood, in its place. And the owner of the wood then collects the value of his wood from the other's flax. These stipulations take effect as it was on this condition that Joshua portioned Eretz Yisrael to the Jewish people. This land is mine. God gave this land to me. New Mishnah. Mishnah, in the case of one who recognizes his stolen vessels and scrolls in another's possession, and a rumor had spread Mishnah, in a case of one who recognizes his stolen vessels and scrolls in another's possession, and a rumor had spread in a city that the former had been a victim, the victim of theft, the purchaser, the one, the one in possession of these items, must take an oath to the victim as to how much money he spent on the purchase, and then he takes that sum of money in exchange for returning the items. And if no such rumor had spread... It is not in the purported victim's power to assert that the items were stolen, and he is not entitled to demand their return. As I could say, the items were never stolen. Rather, the purported victim has sold them to another, and this individual currently possesses the item, purchased them from that other person. Okay, Gamora. The Gamora asks, and if a rumor spread in the city that he had take, been a victim of theft. What of it? Let us suspect that perhaps he sold the items, and he himself is spreading the rumor that they were stolen so that 
he will be able to buy them back. The Gemara answer is that Rav Yehuda said, that Rav said, the Mishnah is discussing a case where people, uh, such as guests, came into his house, and he arose at night and shouted and said, my vessels have been stolen, in which case it seems clear that he was the victim of theft. The Gemara rejects this rationale. On the contrary, the suspicion that he is lying should apply all the more so as he has found a pretext for claiming that his property was stolen, and it should be suspected that he is taking advantage of the situation dishonestly. Rav Kahana would conclude this halakha by st- stating, in the name of Rav, the Mishnah is discussing a case where a group of people spent the night in his house. And there was a tunnel that had been burrowed in his house. And the people that stayed overnight as guests in his house left with bundles of vessels on their shoulders. And everyone says, so-and-so's vessels were stolen. In such a case, there is clear evidence that the homeowner was the victim of theft. The Gemara questions this explanation. But perhaps only vessels were stolen, but scrolls were not. Why must the purchaser return the scrolls as well as the vessels. The Gemara answers that Rav Chia Bar Abba said, that Rav Yochanan said, the mission is discussing a case where everyone is saying that scrolls were also stolen. Ah! Oh. The Gemara asks, but let us suspect that perhaps only, let us suspect that perhaps only scr- small scrolls were taken while he was claiming that large scrolls were stolen. If this is the case, he is claiming scrolls that do not belong to him. The Gemara answers that Rabbi Yossi Barchanina said, The Mishnah is discussing a case where people are saying such and such a scroll and such and such a scroll were stolen. In other words, it is known which scrolls were taken from the homeowner. The Gemara questions this as well. But perhaps the scrolls that were stolen were old and had therefore depreciated in value, while he is claiming that new scrolls were taken. If so, he is claiming scrolls that do not belong to him. Rav said the Mishnah is discussing a case where people would say explicitly, these are so-and-so's vessels, and these are so-and-so's scrolls. In this case, it is known exactly which items were stolen. The Gemara asks, and did Rav actually say this? But doesn't Rav himself say that a burglar who came in and took vessels and left is exempt from paying for those items? What is the reason for this exemption? It is because he purchases them with his with his blood. Does that sound familiar? <clears throat> Since a homeowner is allowed to kill a burglar, a burglar is exempt from returning stolen items based on the principle one receives the greater punishment. Consequently, if the burglar himself is exempt, hold on. Okay. Oh, if a bur- maybe if a burglar killed somebody. Doesn't rob himself a burglar who came in and took vessels and left, exempt from paying those items. Okay, since a homeowner is allowed to kill a burglar, a burglar is exempt from exerting the stolen items based on the principle. That doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, the Gemara explains this matter. One who steals, acquires what he stole, applies only to a burglar, as he initially is subject himself to be killed <clears throat> when he broke into the house. But concerning these thieves who stayed overnight as guests of the homeowner, since they did not break into the house and thereby subject themselves to being killed, they are not exempt from returning the stolen item. The Gemara notes that Rava says, We taught that all of these conditions must be met before the purchaser can be forced to return the item with regard to a homeowner who is wont to sell his vessels. But with regard to a homeowner who is not want to sell his vessels, 